whoever told you that size doesn't matter is a bold-faced liar. Hey guys, welcome back. This is such an exciting thing for me to share with you guys. The idea of this was to take my regular 1000 by 1000 X-Carve and turn it into an 1800 by 1000 X-Carve. Step one was to increase the height of the Y-axis to give more clearance. And this was actually the last official job of the X-Carve before being decommissioned and rebuilt. So before I could actually start breaking down the X-Carve into its parts to be able to reassemble it, I needed to increase the size of the table it sat on. So the table itself is just simple 2x4 construction held together with pocket holes. And when I rebuilt the table, I actually added casters to the bottom so I'd be able to move the X-Carve around a little bit easier in our basement. So if you've built an X-Carve, I guarantee you'll know how to take an X-Carve apart. And that's what I had to do in these steps. Starting with the foundation of the X-Carve, I disassembled everything and used the new 1800 millimeter rails to be able to increase the length of the overall machine. A majority of the parts that the X-Carve came with, I was able to reuse. If you're looking for steps in how I actually built this and did this upgrade, I posted an article to Instructables that actually breaks down the step-by-step -step on putting this machine together. The 1800 millimeter maker slide that I purchased from Inventables does not come tapped. So before assembling the gantry, you do need to take the time to tap those holes. So you can attach the new riser plates to the maker slide. The first time I put the front riser plates on, I quickly realized that I forgot to add the T-nuts, which are used in a later step, to be able to add the support braces that attach the frame of the X-Carve to the maker slide. Hey, if this is your first time visiting my channel, I really want to say thanks for checking out the work that I'm doing. I have other videos that are centered around the X-Carve and CNC, but I also have lots of furniture projects that I've built. If you like what you see, I'd love to see you hit that thumbs up button or even subscribe. Thanks, guys. I knew that the existing X carriage would need to be beefed up a little bit, so I added this linear rail from Open Builds that just gives the X-Carve overall higher travel distance, but as well adds a ton of strength to the X-Carriage. I should point out if you're adding a linear rail or this kind of an upgrade to your X-Carve, you will have to update your gerbil settings, and I'll show you how to do that later on in the video. I took pictures of the wiring as I went because all of that had to be extended, as well as the drag chain had to be doubled in length to be able to reach the controller. At this stage, I was able to reassemble the base fully and start taking my measurements to be able to cut out the new waste board for the X-Car. Since everything else was getting an upgrade, I figured the waste board needed one as well. So I went with a one inch thick piece of MDF as opposed to the three quarter inch that the standard X-Car comes with. I had to drill new holes in the new waste board to be able to attach the bolts and the T-nuts to the frame of the X-Car. Aligning the T-nuts to the bolts can be a little tricky, but just take your time with it and you'll get everything locked in. Home stretch, I had to build the support brackets for the Y-axis maker slide, and I made those out of aluminum. Aluminum can be cut with woodworking tools, just be careful. Templates for the supports as well as the mounting plates will be in the instructions. So if you have questions about measurements, feel free to check those out in the description below. Remember those T-nuts I mentioned earlier that I slid into the maker slide? There they are. This might be an optional step for a lot of you. I have a suck it dust boot that I purchased as an aftermarket upgrade to my X-Carve. I had to modify this slightly so I'd be able to get the right travel distance to be able to still use the standard arms that the suck it comes with. This by no means is a permanent fix, but it does give me the ability to now use the suck it until I can figure out a better solution. If you have any suggestions, please, please put those in the comments below. Inventables software easel makes it super easy to adjust the size of your work area. And you really just need to make this one change to tell the machine that you're now working with a larger work area. As I mentioned earlier, you will need to make some adjustments within your gerbil settings to be able to account for the new linear rail. 
This might be different for you depending on what kind of an Acme screw you're using. So I put a link below to an article that I found that showed me the exact way to set up my settings so I'd be able to have the correct travel on my X-Carve. Being able to do these kind of upgrades to an X-Carve for me makes it all the reason why you should look at this machine over others that are in the market right now. So these upgrades were probably somewhere in the ballpark of two years in the planning, but only really took me a majority of the weekend to complete. I realize that this is still a hobbyist level machine, but the increased capacity to be able to make signs and make templates is unreal. I could not be happier with how well all these upgrades turned out. If you're looking to do the same to your X-Carve, I've left in the description below links to all the materials that you'll need, as well as a link to the instructables that I put together, which goes through more of a step-by-step -step on how to actually complete these upgrades to your X-Carve. I'm always over on Instagram, so if you do this upgrade to your machine, I'd love to see you use the hashtag 6Carve. We'll see you guys on the next video. I've queued up a few more here just in case you feel like watching some more of my stuff. Take care.